Hello, everyone. Welcome to our NCE training courses. I'm Jenny from NOSR, today's host. Our training will start soon, and the topic is troubleshooting flagout issue and the screen flagrant. To provide you a good training environment, we sincerely suggest you to keep your audio on mute mode during the whole session. Please scan a QR code or click the link at chat room to sign in. If you cannot click the link, please copy and paste it to your browser. Feel free to leave your questions that are related to today's topic on the chat room. We will reply to you later on the Q&A session. If you have any other questions that are not about today's content, please feel free to send an email to nce at novastar.tech. Now, let's welcome Gilbert. He's today's trainer. Okay, hello everyone. This is Gilbert from Nova Star. Uh, it has been five months since the last NCE training. During this period, we have received many emails from the customers and asked for news about the second online NCE training. Now we are back. It's thanks to the friends who have always supported Nova Star. Thank you. I'd like to start it with uh, a short introduction of NCE training to your guys who are not much familiar. The full name of NCE is Novastar Certified Engineer. We have treated more than 3,000 individuals all around the world. Since it started in 2014, by giving multiple course and available checks to embrace the LED control system, NCE courses enable you to operate and maintain the equipment independently. Because of the special situation this year, we hold the training session online. We are hoping more texts, more techniques could get the knowledge and the certification, even in a hard time. This term, we will have seven courses and a final examination. You could get an online training certification if you sign in for six courses at least and pass the final exam. I hope you guys can, get, can, can go to all courses to make a good score. Okay, so for today's topic, it's troubleshooting. And we mainly focus on two common issues, the blackout issue and the screen flicker issue. So we started from the troubleshooting blackout issue. Before we go through more details about blackout issue, I would like to introduce you guys a very useful information, which is the indicator status of the receiving card. Because from the indicator status of the receiving card, we can get a lot of information. It can help a lot to do the troubleshooting. So there will totally have two indicators on the receiving card, one red and one gray. The red one indicates the power supply standards, and the gray one indicates the system working standards. And from the red one, it should be always solid on. If it's not, that means there were some hardware issues on your power supply. And you need to change the power supply to make sure the receiving card can normally work. In. And for the gray indicator, it indicates in the system uh, working status, different blink frequency, it indicates different meanings. And they are totally have four different situations. And we can check it out one by one. For the first one, is normal working status. If your receiving card is working in normal, working in normal, the gray indicator should be blinks once per second. Here, I have a small video. You guys can check it out. So on the red one, it's solid on. It's not blinks. And but for the gray one, it blinks once per second. 
And for the second situation, it is still normally working, but it's in the backup mode because Nova Star provides the hot backup solution, which can improve the whole system's stability. So if the receiving card working in hot backup mode, the grid indicator should be quick flash. And the frequency should be four times in half seconds. And the flash again four times after half seconds. It is internally happens. So let's see the video. Just know, like the video shows, the grid indicators four times flash in half seconds. And for the third situation, it's the network cable is not connected. In that condition, the gray indicator is slow flash. It is flash blinks once per five seconds. Again, we can see in a video. It is very, very slow flash. And from the last one, it's, uh, there is no signal input. So in that condition, the gray indicator, it also quick flash, but it's a little bit different from the backup mode flash, quick flash. It is three times in half second and the flash again, three times after half second. Let's see the video. So those are all of the uh, indicator status of our receiving card. Since we already know all of the indicator status, next we can uh, start the blackout issue troubleshooting. So for the screen blackout issue, there were total have two different kinds of blackout. The first one is full screen blackout. It is pretty easy to understand. That means there is nothing shows on your LED screen. And for the second one is part of LED screen blackout. It have the panel level. We also sometimes we also call it cabinet level. And the second picture is shows in the module level, just the smallest part in LED screen blacked out. And for the third picture, it shows one output port blackout. So there were two diff three different types part of screen blackout. So let's check out one by one. For those kind of blackout issue, what could be the reason? Uh, to locate the problems, we have to go check the LED control system structure. So here is the basic system structure. Uh, I have to say all of the components in this structure could affect the LED screen built to black. It could be affected by the input source. It could be affected by the sending card. It also could be affected by the Ethernet ports. If the Ethernet cable is not connected well, your screen will be go to black. And it is also caused, can cause by the LED screen itself. But inside of the LED screen, it has the receiving card, it has the hot board, it has a flat cable, and also it has the LED module itself. All of the factors could be in the possible reason of the blackout issue. So we need to do the troubleshooting step by step. Uh, how to do that? Uh, we started from the full screen blackout. For the full screen blackout, here I got a table. Here it shows all of the potential cores and corresponding solution. And let's check it out one by one. The first one, and also the simplest one, is that we need to check the screen power. Make sure the screen power is turned it on. And also we need to check whether the power supply have the sufficient output voltage. So this is the first part. And the second part is the brightness value. This zero percent brightness will also cause your LED screen go to black. So you need to manually increase the brightness to solve the problems if it's caused by the brightness. And we also need to go to a screen control page to make sure you didn't send blackout command to your LED screen. Just change the working status to normal display. And for the third part is Ethernet cables. You need to check whether Ethernet cable is well connected. If it's loose, you need to reconnect the Ethernet cable. But if it's good fault, you need to change the good quality Ethernet cables. And for the fourth part, it's about the sending card part. For the sending card part, the first step, we need to make sure the sending card is powered on. 
And the second, we need to make sure we selected the correct input source because most of our controller can support multiple input source, which can support HDMI, DVI, SDI, CVBS, VGA, a lot of different input source. You need to make sure you selected the correct one. And for the third one, is uh, you need to check the input source interface. Because sometimes there are some hardware issues on your interface, input source interface. If there were some hardware issue on your input source interface, you need to change to different input interface or just change a different sending card to solve the problems. And for the fifth part, we need to check the video source part. We need to make sure the video source is not a black video source. And we also need to check the cable connection. Here, the cable connection means the video source cable, like the HDMI cable, DVI cable, and CVBS cable, SDI cable. And for the third one is compatibility issues. Uh, sometimes the video source cannot work properly with our sending cards. And you, you need to make sure the sending card have the latest firmware loaded. If you finish to upload the firmware, upload the latest firmware and the issue still, and you need to change the video source. Because all of our controller, it's conformed to Visa standards. If your video source cannot work with our controller, that means your video source cannot output the standard uh, input source. And the last part is you need to go to check the receiving card part. You need to make sure your configuration file, the firmware from the receiving card, it's all correct. If you do not have the configuration file, you can try to contact an LED manufacturer because they, they always have the backup for different kind of panels. Or you can just contact Star, contact us. We can help to recreate the configuration file, but you need to provide all of the LED module information to us. And for the firmware, you have to confirm that with the LED manufacturer and loaded the correct firmware for your receiving card. So this is all of the presentation course for the full screen blackout issue. And all of the corresponding uh, solutions were also list on the right part. So, but what, what's the process? Where we should start it? So actually, I just work out another process here. For the full screen blackout, we recommended you guys to start it from the receiving card indicator status, just as I mentioned in the first time, in the first part. We need to check the gray indicators, we need to check the gray, uh, red indicators, but we started from the red indicator because it is easy. If the indi red indicator is off, which means there were, it, it is power supply issue, you need to change or check or change or replace power supply to fix the blackout issue. But if the red indicator is on, it is, everything is okay, and we can go other part. We check the gray indicator. For the gray indicator, we need to check the blink frequency. If it's slow flash, and then we can locate the issue to sending card part and the Ethernet cable part. But if the gray indicator is fast flash, like three times per half second, and we can locate the issue to the video source issue. And we need to go check the video source. But, and uh, if the gray indicator is normal flash, like once per second, and we need to go further to check more hardwares, like the hub board, and we also need to check the firmware configuration file on the receiving card, and we also check the brightness value and the screen control to make sure it is normal display status. So after all of the troubleshooting, you will work out a solution for the full screen blackout issue. So this is the full screen blackout issue troubleshooting possible reasons. And also we recommended troubleshooting process. Next, let's move to part of screen blackout. For the part of screen blackout, there are three different types, just as I mentioned before. There are output for level blackout, there are captain level blackout, and there are module level blackout. For an output for level blackout, 
we need to go check the screw power, make sure the first cabinet power supply is good working. And we also need to check the output port. This part, the output port power is not tripped or go to fault. For the screw power issues, uh, we just need to change the power supply to fix the problem. It is pretty easy. And for the second part, uh, for the second one, it's the Ethernet cable. We need to check the Ethernet cable is loose or go to fault. If it's loose, just reconnect it. If it's just go to fault, you need to change it to a new one. And third, we need to check the sending card to make sure the output port it's not it's it's good working. If you have the spear output port, you can switch to a spear output port, see whether your screen uh, come to normal display. Or sometimes you already run out of all of the ports, you can change in the sending card to locate the issue. So this is for an output port level blackout issue. And for a cabinet level blackout issue, the first, we also need to go check the power. If there is no power, nothing working, you know. So check the power, this is the first thing we need to do. Make sure the power supply unit is working perfectly. And then we can move to the Ethernet cable. But the, here in the Ethernet cable, it's not the cable between the sending card and the receiving card. It is the dropper cable between two cabinets. If they will go to loose or go to fault, just reconnect it or change it to a new cable. And the third, to check the receiving card, make sure the configuration file, which means an RCFGX file, is the correct one. And uh, second, make sure the firmware is the correct one. And third, make sure there is no hardware issue on your receiving card. You can replace to a new receiving card to locate whether it is caused by the receiving card fault. And uh, for the last part of cabinet level output, cabinet level blackout issue is hot board. Because hot board also caused the whole panel blackout. We need to check whether hot board is go to fault. If it's go to fault, you need to change to a new hot board to fix the problem. So that's all potential courses for the cabinet level out blackout issue. The last one, the last tab type is the module level. On the module level, it's zero. We need to check the power first. And the second, go to the hub board. We need to make sure the hub board connector is perfectly working. And from the last one, it's a flat cable. Make sure it is well connected, not loose, not fault. So this is all of the potential cores from the part of the script blackout issue and the corresponding solutions. But what the process for part of the script blackout? We also work out process here, the recommended process. So for the part of the script blackout, we need to confirm it, is, it happens on output port level or capital level or module level. If it happens on specific output port of sending card, you can try to change to another output port. If the problems stay on the same output port and we can locate the issue to cabinet power supply or sending card issue. If the issue is switched to the new output port and we can locate the issue to the Ethernet cable connection, just go to check the Ethernet cable connection or switch to a new Ethernet cable to fix the problems. And for the second one, if it happens on a specific cabinet or a panel, Sometimes we call it a panel. Yeah, we need to go check the power supply of this cap date, and we need to check the dropper cable connection, and we need to check the configuration file from the receiving card. We need to check the firmware version from the receiving card. If the issue confirmed, the issue will be solved. If it's not confirmed, we need to change the receiving card. If the receiving card has been changed and the issue switched to the new cabinet, we can locate the issue to the receiving card. So that may cause by a hardware issue, receiving card hardware issue. But if the issue stay on the same cabinet, and we need to go check the hub board. 
because the if we switch the receiving card and the problem is still there, and the, the big chance is how board caused this problem. So this is for the second situation. And for the third one, if, 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 if the blackout issue happens on a specific module, you need to direct, directly go to check the power supply of the LED module and check the flat cable and check the hot board connectors. Make sure everything is working good. After all of the troubleshooting, and we can work out a solution, work out a solution for the part of screen blackout issues. So that's all troubleshooting methods for full, full script blackout issue or part of a script blackout issue. Here, we do a summary from the first part of today's training. We just go through in the resume card, gray indicator status, different blink frequency have different meanings. Normal display flash once per second, and backup mode is quick flash four times per half second. And the network cable is not connected. The flash, it's, it, it is slow flash, slash uh, blinks once per five seconds. And if, the, if there is no signal input, it is also quick flash three times per half second. And then we just do a troubleshooting for the script blackout issue. We have two different types, full script blackout. If it's full script blackout, we started from the Racini card indicator status to do the troubleshooting. And if it's part of script blackout, we need to confirm its output port level or captain level or module level. Just to follow the troubleshooting table I mentioned about to do the troubleshooting to find out a solution. What we call those this way methods is uh, cross validation methods. So this is for the first part of our today's training. It's about great blackout issue troubleshooting. And uh, let's continue to the second part. The second part is uh, screen blinker issue troubleshooting. Uh, this is a very common issue in the LED screen. Uh, I think some of you guys may met this kind of issue in your project. So uh, it, it is just the same as the blackout issue. The first we need to do is locate the issue. The sending card and receiving card is the most important part in the LED control system. Uh, so we need to locate the issue, but is there any useful tools we can use to help us to locate the issue, to identify where the problems and the answer is yes, because Noah Star have two very useful features, which are called screen control and test tool. Those two features, the functions are similar. They all send the uh, test pattern to your LED screen to test out whether your LED screen be well configured. But they were a little bit different is uh, the screen control, all of the test pattern image, it's from receiving card. And from the test tool, all of the test pattern image, it's from your video source, from, from the control PC. So let's see the details. First, from the screen control. The, sin, the signal is from receiving card directly. And next, let's see how to do the software operation to use this function to help us to do the troubleshooting. Actually, for the screen control, we have two different ways to use this function. You can do it on the software, normal LCD, or do it on the front panel, because most of our controller have a LCD monitor in the front, and there's a knob, there's a back button. You can just rotate those, this knob and do some basic control for your LED screen. Uh, so let's say in the software first, if you want to use the software to do the screen control, send some test pattern, just log in with the password admin. I know you guys were very familiar about this software already, so I'm not going to show you how to log in. So after you successfully log into the software, you can see in the main page, the fourth icon is screen control. Just one click this icon, and you will go to this page. 
and they will show three buttons on top, blackout, freeze, and normal. Just one click to blackout your screen or freeze your screen or change your screen working standards to normal display. Or you can go to uh, the drop down list to select different color, peer color, and send to your LED screen, like red, gray, blue, white. And also it can support send some gray, the horizontal lights, vertical lights, slash lights, and also have gradu gradually change to 56 gray. Just the one click send, send the image test pattern to your LD screen. Uh, so this is from the hardware, uh, this is from the software operation steps. Next, let's see the hardware. Here I'm using MCDR 4K as an example. From left to right, to right there were three pictures. The first one is the main interface of the LCD monitor in the front panel. And uh, one click the knob, go to the submenu of the LCD monitor and choose display control and then you will see exactly the same option on the software, the LCD software. Just normal display, phrase, blacked out, or you can go into test pattern to send some pure color or gradually change the color. So this is about the screen control. The screen control function actually is very useful. It can help because since the all of the image is come from the receiving card directly. So it can help a lot to do the troubleshooting. If your screen have the flickery issue, you can send the, the test pattern to your LD screen. If the issue still, which means the problems happens on receiving card side. But if the problem is disappear, which means it is a may cause by the sending card or the video source. So it helps a lot for our troubleshooting. Next, let's see in the second useful, useful tools, it's test tool. Just as I mentioned, the test tool signal is from the control PC. That means you have to connect it both control cable and the video source cable between your PC and your controller. So after you finish this system structure, we can move to software. You still need to run the LCT software and find the test tool button and one click go inside the test tool interface. And you can see they will totally have uh, six tabs in this page, the window, peer color, gradual change, grade, orientation, and help. The last one help, we do, need, we do not need to care about this. So we started from the window. The window is give, a way, give you a way to change the window size the start X, start Y, and the coordinates. So for the, normally for the coordinates, start X, start Y, we say it's zero, zero. And for the width and the height, we said the width and height just exactly same with your LED screen size to make sure when you send some test pattern image to LED screen, it could be a full screen displays. So this is the first step. And for the second one, pure color, and the third one, gradual change, those two features, it's just the same as the screen control function, pure color, and the 256 screen. So I'm not going to talk about those two parts here. Let's move to the third part, fourth part, actually. It's grid. The grid function is very useful. We can use the grid function to identify whether your screen is pixel by pixel display or not. So here, I got a two pictures here on the right. You can check on the bottom picture. I just sense the horizontal grade to the LED screen. It is shows not very clearly. It is blur. It has some tear issue, tear issue lies. So we can uh, know this gray is not pixel by pixel display. Let's check the top picture. The top picture, we send the horizontal lies each line just let one single row pixels light up. So we can, we can know this is the pixel by pixel display. You can, do you know how to do the pixel by pixel, how to make your LED screen pixel by pixel display? 
just make sure your sending card resolution exactly same with your video source resolution. And the last very useful feature is our attention. Now our attention is used for to quick to find out where the problem cabinet or where the problem module. The orientation, you just need to type in the module size. And the second step is just type in how many rows and column and modules drives by each receiving card. And the one click orientation, your screen will be displayed like the left picture shows. Each panel has one number in the center. So we can easily find the top left one is the first panel and go to right and the second one, third one, fourth one. It is pretty easy and very useful to, to find out the position of your issue panel or issue module. So that's all for the spree control and the test tool operation steps. As we, since we already know how to do that on software, so that we can start to do the troubleshooting on a spree flicker issue. For the spree flicker issue, uh, how to locate the issues. I have to say, we have to break out the LED control system structure again. All of the components in the LED, con LED control system structure could affect your screen go to flicker. It could be a video source, it could be a sending card, it could be the LED screen itself. Inside of each panel, it has a receiving card, it has a hub board, and a flat cable to connect it between the hub board and the LED module. And it also may cost by an LED module itself. So we have to do the troubleshooting step by step. Here, actually, I listed all of the possible reasons from the flickering issue. So the receiving card hardware issue or receiving card configuration file, receiving card firmware, the video source, or maybe the power supply. Also, all of those factors will cause the spree flickering. But how to do the troubleshooting? Can we get a more accurate troubleshooting process? Actually, it is yes. The most important question is we need to figure out the flicker issue is happens in fixed position or randomly happens or whole screen. Different flickery phenomenon have different troubleshooting process. So first, let's see if the flickery only happens in some basic fixed position. We need to confirm it happens on output port level or cabinet level or module level. It still have three different types flake create on a fixed position flake create. If it happens on an output port level, we just need to change to another output port, see whether the issue still. If the problem stay on the same old output port, that means the cine car output port may cause the flake create issue. So you may need to change to another uh, output port. If the problem switch to the new output port, so that we can know it could be the Ethernet cable issue. We need to change the Ethernet cable to fix the problems. And if, if the play create issue happens on some specific panel or cabinet, we need to go to check the firmware, go to check the configuration file from the receiving card. If they are same, we need to do a comparison, actually, variation between the normal working cabinets and the issue cabinets. If all of the firmware configuration file is same, and we can change the receiving card with a normal one to fix the problem. If it's not the same, we need to make sure they are using same configuration file, same firmware. So uh, we can fix the problems by changing the receiving card hardware. 
But if, if we change the hardware, it's, the problem is still there. We need to go to check the cabinet hardware, like the top board, the module hardware, the mo LD module itself, I mean. So this is for the second specific cabinet or panel flicker issue, just follow the process. And for the third one is if the flicker issue happens on a specific module, we directly go to check the flat cable or hub board connectors. So after all of the process, all of the troubleshooting, definitely we can work out a solution for the flicker issue. So this is the phone first. If the flicker issue happens in fixed position, and here I also work out a table and list all of the petition cores and the corresponding solution. You can check it out one by one. So for the, if the flicker issue happens on the output port of sending card, we need to go check the first cabinet power supply. If it's go to fault, change a new power supply to fix that. And the second, we need to check whether the output port is overloaded. If it's overloaded, we need to change the power connection, make sure it's just drive proper cabinet number of pack cabinets. And third one is Ethernet cable, to check whether the Ethernet cable output port is bad or not. If it's go to bad, you need to change the Ethernet cable. And for the second situation is if the flicker issue happens on a specific panel or cabinet, the first to say we need to check its power supply. Make sure the power supply is normal and the output power, output voltage is sufficient. And the second, check the jumper cable. The jumper cable means the cable between two cabinets. Make sure everything is working good. And third, to check the receiving card, make sure in the configuration file, RCFDX file, firmware, they are all used the correct one. And also you need to check the receiving card, see whether it has the hardware issue. If it has hardware issue, go to change a new receiving card. And the last possible reason for the cabinet level flickery is hub board. If the hub board is go to fault, just change to a new hub board to fix the problem. And for the third type, it's the flicker issue happens on a specific module. And the first step, we still need to go to check the power. If the power is, is working good, go to check the hub board. See whether the hub board connector, output connector is, is good. And the last one is a flat cable. Make sure the flat cable connection is good. If there is some hardware issue or, some, the, or the flat cable is go to fault, you just change a new flat cable to fix the problem, the flicker. So this is for the first, if the flicker issue happens in fixed position. And we have the second type I just mentioned. If the flicker happens, in randomly happens on your whole screen. How can we do troubleshooting? Next, let's see if the flicker is unfixed, what we can do. So actually, we need to confirm it is whole screen flicker or it is the screen randomly flicker. No matter how it flicker, we can use the screen control to send the test pattern to your LD screen, see whether the screen flicker is still. If the problems still, that means the problems is on the receiving card part. And we need to go check the firmware. If the firmware is not the correct one, we do the firmware update. And we need to go check the configuration file. If the configuration file is not the correct one, we need to load the original configuration file. You can just contact 
LED manufacturer to get the backup configuration file, or just contact us, Novastar, to help you guys to recreate the configuration file. And if the if we use if we send the screen test pattern to your LD screen and the flicker is disappear, which means the problems and we have nothing to do in receiving card. We need to go check the sending card, video source connection, video cable, and Ethernet cable. The Ethernet cable here means the Ethernet cable between the sending card and the receiving card. So after we follow all of the steps, all of the process here, you can work out a solution for the flicker issue. Same, I work out a table for you guys to make sure you guys can understand all of the troubleshooting steps clearly. So for the full script flickery or randomly flickery, the first potential course is the computer. We need to go check the graphic card, out, graphic card output issue. If there was some issue on the graphic card output, we just change another graphic card or change a different PC. The second is graphic card frame rate. It's not matched with the cine card. We, we need to change the frame rate on both sides to make sure they are matched together. And the second one is the video cable. We need to make sure the connector and the cables is all well connected. And the third one is go to the sending card part to check whether the input source indicator, uh, I'm sorry, to check the input interface, see whether it's damaged or it's, it's good condition. And second, is that cable output port? And third one is hardware issues. No matter how, no matter it's interface damage, or is that cable output, is that output port issue or hardware issue? You can replace a sending card to fix the problem. And next one is the receiving card. We need to check the firmware, check the configuration file inside of the receiving card to make sure your flicker issue is not caused by the configuration file or the firmware. And the last one is the power supply make sure the power supply output is sufficient. If it's not, you need to change it to a new power supply. So uh, this is the troubleshooting methods and uh, also on the recommended process, troubleshooting process. So after you did all of the troubleshooting, you should work out a solution for that. If you, you if the flicker is still there, and you can contact us to do the further troubleshooting. Okay, next, let's have a summary for the second part of today's training. The second part of today's training, first, we just introduce, I just introduce you two useful functions. It's screen control and test tool. The screen control, all of those image is from the receiving card itself. And for the test tool, the image is from the video source. After we know how to use those two functions, we started the screen flicker issue troubleshooting. For the screen flicker issue, we have two different types. It is fixed position or randomly happens. From the randomly happens flicker, we need to use the screen control to send the test pattern and then follow the troubleshooting process to locate the issue. If the flickery issue is happens in fixed position, we also have three different types. We have sending card, output port level, captain level, or module level. And we need to look at the troubleshooting table, look at the troubleshooting process, do the troubleshooting step-by-step -step to work out a solution for the flicker issue. So that's all for today's topic. And if you want to get more video about our solution, about our operation steps, software operation steps, you can visit our official website, www.novastar.tech.
and then go to sport and training and then you will see Noah Star online workshops and you can find all of the related videos or solutions you can do some practice or study there so that's all for today's training thanks for your guys attention please scan the QR code and click the link here at the or at the zoom message zoom to fill up the feedback we will record record a video to this session you can get a video link on the next session or you can follow the normal star YouTube channel to watch this video if you have any further questions please feel free to contact us at ncenamastar.tech. Okay, so next is our Q&A time. I'd like to invite my colleague Miller to answer the questions you guys put on the chat window. All right, 